So the story on the piano is I was actually trying to get um, a really big rapper and a really big artist to come and perform with me here. And then we had no piano, and it was hard enough to get hold of them, so they didn't come. Anyway, <laughs> my name's Micah Brown. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur, and uh, here at MIT, uh, last year I created something called the Brain Rap Project with my team. And basically what the Brain Rap Project is, is uh, a machine that thinks for you so that you can rap better, very simply put. Um, so I'm going to take you guys through what it does and how it works. This is uh, Brain Rap version one. Uh, it's uh, the neurable device and a Vive. And those two things work together to basically predict what you were thinking and then put you in a VR environment that helps you to be able to rap. So uh, from that form factor, if you will, the thing that we realized is you can't have one of these in every household in America. They're very expensive and they're impractical. So we then move the modality from the headset to a computer. So the best way to think about the version that I'll be showing you today is reverse karaoke. Um, it's a kind of low effort way to be able to learn how to rap really, really quickly with all the same science just compressed into a web app. So uh, I do have a TED talk on like extended reasons as to why I created Brain Rap, but very simply, artists don't always get what's due to them in the music industry, um, whether that's in the form of royalties or what are called split sheets, uh, which sometimes record labels use to take advantage of artists. There's a myriad reasons why artists don't get to get treated and get paid the way that they should, but that's a lot of the reason for Brain Rap. So we did a lot of work on understanding the connection between um, semantic relativity, which is this way you can look at uh, these things called voxels in the brain, where words intersect with emotions, and what that means for what happens in a rapper's brain when they rap. So rappers do something very interesting. They use something called a mental event horizon. This is when you can ten, tell 10 to 15 words ahead, which I'm doing right now, which is why I said 10 tell to 15 words ahead of what you're going to say and then in real time, move that around. So if I said something like, in real time, move that around, I'd make a sound that was different in real time where I didn't have to put that, and I behoove that around. So that's generally what rappers do. They're thinking 10 to 20, 30 words ahead of anyone else. Um, it's really hard for a normal human being to do that, though. <laughs> so um, what we realized was there's a direct connection between mental state, uh, which is what enables me to do that. I get into a very relaxed mental state about what I'm going to say, and I disconnect myself from the actual words, and I focus on the cadence of the words, and then the words just come. But for most people, they're very worried about just saying nonsense. <laughs> so once you disconnect yourself from that, all of a sudden, uh, there's what's called a performance round, which is the times that you actually uh, take a cadence and say words, and they become less important, and you get better at the cadence alone. So again, to take that back, less important, the cadence alone, and I'm changing, I'm making a zone, because I keep going in a place where they never really know. I don't actually know what I'm going to say. I just know that there's a certain pattern of the words, and they need to go together in a certain way. <laughs> wow, I didn't even know the last bit. That was crazy. Um, so uh, what was actually really cool about um, the five days that we worked on this project here at MIT was the people I were working with are super smart. And uh, we were able to create three machine learning algorithms, one that was focused on understanding what was going to be said, one that was focused on human thought, in relation to what was already said by the person. And then when you combine both of those things, potentially across a sample set of people, what might be said, which you can infer what everybody would say. And in rap, we call that a cipher. So um, I actually spent most of last year after the Brain Rap Project going to Union Square um, and, and rapping with the kids there using some of these techniques. And what generally happens in a cipher is something called the mirror neuron complex. So if you ever watch a cipher online, sometimes one of the other rappers will say a word that's the next word that the other rapper said, it's not because they're superhuman, it's they're all on the thought plane, the same thought plane, and that thought plane is 10 to 15 words ahead of what everything is going to be said. So it's like a bunch of people are on a big whiteboard just writing out words, and that's the only reason they know how to do that. So all three of those algorithms basically corresponded to that. So um, there's a really popular video on Vox which breaks down some of the science of rap. And so actually what's happening here is a double bar line two cadence, four count. So if you see where these yellow words are, basically what's happening with those, cutie, booty, and kugel, that's a high frenetic word that graduates. And then the word dookie is in the next bar, but then the expletive at the end actually refers to another bar end. That's called a bar close. So there's a lot of science that goes into rap that a lot of people are unaware of. But what brain rap does is it takes all of the need for that away. <laughs> you could just speak and learn in real time using a lot of neuroscience and, and data science and AI that we've 
put together in the last year, and you can kind of do what's on the screen without knowing how to do all that stuff. So what's really interesting about the two sides of rap science is what I just showed you was the lyrical side. Um, there's also the beat, though. So if you ever kind of see rappers in a battle, sometimes they'll put words exactly on beat, and everyone wonders how they do that, right? What's actually happening is they're keeping a count in their heads whilst they say something. That's like another level of the mental computation that it takes to rap. That's also included in brain rap. So let's check out the tool. So if I say something really slow, so what it then does is it goes through the feature space of what I just said. Um, I'm still doing it, OK. <laughs> um, it goes through the feature space of what I just said, and it finds every permutational rhyming word in that feature space. And that's all the words that rhyme here. Now, if you take one of those words and you use it in your rap, um, the AI basically understands that you're listening to it and you're mimicking what it said. So if I said something like AR in action is the best place that they've ever seen, it feels like the shortest shoe to a level of promethazine. The target on a tantum is a tantapertum. What's that? That's the unsurpassed action that I'll accept as an accident under the fact that I got here. WhatsApp, message to my past self, exemplary effects on the past selves for every speaker who was on this stage because they're rapping to their past selves. So, you know, you see it works, it's cool. Um, here's what I learned, right? You know, I've been an entrepreneur for four years. I've failed a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff has gone wrong. A lot of stuff has gone badly. <laughs> um, when you're trying to solve a problem, you shouldn't put the onus on the audience that you're trying to solve the problem for. Just because you're a brilliant whatever, neuroscientist, entrepreneur, rapper, whoever, whatever, however, artist, you shouldn't put that on the people you're trying to solve the problem for because that's actually not really solving the problem. So, you know, I think one of the key things that I, I took away from, you know, this last year as an entrepreneur is doing that. And what this does really, really simply is anyone who just wants to learn how to rap can literally just come, walk over, and have no experience whatever. And a few people have done this as, since I've showed it to them. And within 10 to 15 minutes, the mirror neuron thing that I was talking about and something called an event tunnel um, and a, a chemical that actually comes about when you learn something and you're excited about it called dopamine, they start kicking off in your brain. And then you start to walk away from the worry of what you're actually going to say, because it's just a machine. And you know, within about an hour, I've seen people use this tool. And we're actually kind of working on quantifying this right now in a white paper. Within about an hour, they become semi-competent rappers. So um, yeah, you know, the way we were trying to solve it the other way before was, let's create this incredible, m massive, incredible piece of technology that sucks all the thoughts out of your brain, and, and so on and so forth. And really, all that was ever needed was this. So, um, I'm going to show you guys what the original version looked like. Uh, AJ, you want to get up there? Yeah, cool. No, you put it on and come up. No, come onto the stage. <laughs> um, so this is uh, someone who works at Sentiment, uh, and he is uh, modeling the original version of the Emotive, um, a 15-channel EEG device. This was actually what we used in this room in the original version of BrainRap. So, you know, this is really brain wrap, and that is what we refer to as eye wrap. Brain wrap is designed to physically pull the thoughts out of your head and write a song for you. Eye wrap is the opposite. It's reverse karaoke. It writes a song for you so that you can learn to rap. Collectively, both of these things actually democratize rap as an art, because the really interesting thing today is, thank you, bro. Uh, the really interesting thing today is like, Hip hop has become really ubiquitous, and that's cool, but it's gotten really disconnected from the cultural reasons that it existed. But once you actually get into what a rapper is doing and why they're doing it and all of the technicality that's required, there's a new appreciation that emerges as to why hip hop was created. Um, so that's actually part of why I want to do this project. Naturally, you know, we're talking to a few different uh, people about creating like a modality that you can just put on your head in the form of a hat that has that device inside it. And then you'd be able to just put on a hat and start rapping better, which would be cool. <laughs> um, but really, when I think about this, there's this cultural dichotomy that emerges in America between people of color and the reasons that they do things and things that happen and everyone else and the perception of both sides of the table, particularly around hip hop. You know, hip hop's become a multi trillion dollar industry, and that's resulted in some people getting very rich and some people getting very poor, ironically enough. Um, so, this tool is designed to actually bridge 
the utilitarian gap of people just wanting to rap with why rap exists. So those, those are those parts of it. Um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time in this talk going into like machine bias and all these different things. There are two talks online that I actually do that in. Um, one that was on the stage at MIT last year and my TED talk, but I will do like a high level summary. Um, so basically what's happening today is machines are making a lot of decisions for us. Uh, actually what happened to Facebook, I think in 2018, was they got sued by the Housing and Urban Development Authority and they got sued because um, HUD was running ads on Facebook, but they were not being shown to the people who they were trying to reach. And they were trying to actually uh, get people Section 8 housing, and Facebook's algorithm was blocking that from those people. And it wasn't a person at Facebook that was doing this. There was no decision that was made. It, it was just the algorithm. Turns out, all of the advertising revenue that goes into Facebook was designed to avoid those areas. And so the algorithm basically learned that these areas were valueless. It just so happened those areas corresponded to where there were people of color. Um, so, you know, the reason I'm, I'm talking about all this stuff is there's a link between all these things, right? How hip hop gets perceived, how the cultural conversation, the political conversation happens, the money that's attached to hip hop, and this age where machines are making decisions for us and we're not relating to each other the way we should, all these things connect, especially in, you know, where we're going to in next year in terms of some of the events that are happening politically. So all these things kind of coalesce together. Um, I think if I was gonna leave you with a key message to think about, it would just be what you're doing with technology and whether it's blocking you from interacting with other people in your lives and in the world. And if there's anything that you can do to overcome those barriers. Um, <laughs> really? I mean, I've got three minutes left. I was trying to keep it science-y, professional stuff, yeah? All right, give me a word. All right, hold on. <laughs> Bananas every single day because I flow in a way that they keep me when I play. I don't really have to play anymore because I make the billions every single day. Where I flow right off of the dome in ways that they don't really know. <laughs> We've got three minutes. Give me another word. Um, action. Oh, that's a nice one. Be mystic. All right, I have to actually think about this. AR is in action the way stereoscopic delay is what? That is in action, that's an E equals MC square. That's an integer, there's no fear felt there because it's an ocean, open, conscientious, agreeable neurotics. Why? Because we close it, seventh generation, clean, clostics. I am in a different place where they'd never even guess. That's a mental mirror neuron test because we're in AR in action because it's AR in action because it's getting commercialized every single day. Test, one, iOS. Why? Because I test flight, because I made the app in this room. Yes. <laughs> All right. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. <laughs>